Welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. We're just blessed that you can join us in this study, this ongoing study. Uh, and this is our 30th part, big, 30th program. Big 3-0. Big 3-0, eh? <laughs> okay. So uh, we're going to be continuing on. Last week we talked about being prepared. And I think... Today, in this program, we're going to be making a transition, and I think it'll be interesting. And for that reason, one of the things I would suggest that you might have something to write with, uh, as we're just going to go through a lot of scripture in, in this program. And, you, you know, I hope that I don't go too fast, but so you can jot something down and it gets your attention and you can go back, because you really should go back spend time <coughs> after the study in the study. Our dear older brother, who's going to be with the Lord, Arthur Burt, always used to say that the meeting doesn't start until the meeting ends. Right. Ask the Lord what that means, because it has great meaning. Yes, it does. But before we start, I will once again ask Brother Mark if you will ask God's blessing on our time together. Oh, Lord, you, you're here in our midst. And Lord, I pray that you put in Butch's mouth what he needs to say, and you put in our heart what we need to hear, and that we, we might apply it to our lives. Amen. 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 Okay. As we started this series, as I say, about 30 weeks ago, right towards the beginning, we did one program on the imitation of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not talking about, there's a difference between an imitation and a counterfeit. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. In, in the sense that an imitation is something positive and a counterfeit is something negative. A counterfeit has its purpose to deceive you, yes. whereas an imitation tries to emulate something, all right? Mm -hmm. You know, Paul wrote to the Ephesians and said, therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, all right? The King James said followers, but the, the Greek word, the Greek word actually comes, that word imitators comes from the Greek word to mimic which means to look like, right? To look like Jesus. And that's what we want to do. You see, we've seen Jesus, or mankind has seen Jesus. Think about what... I'm going to read to you what Philip, as, as Jesus and his apostles, the disciples, were going into Jerusalem. And I'm going to read from John chapter 14. Philip said to him, to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and it's enough for us. And Jesus said to him, have I been so long with you, and yet you have not come to know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own initiative, but the Father abiding in me does his works. Right? John 14, 8 through 10. So, seeing Jesus... Because he is mimicking the Father. He and the Father are one. Yes. Right? How many times does he say that? Uh, okay. But think about what Paul said, the Apostle Paul, when he wrote to the Corinthians and said, When I was a child, I used to speak like a child, think like a child, reason like a child. When I became a man, I did away with childish things. 1 Corinthians 13, 11. So Paul is basically saying, okay, that we're to speak, to, to think like, speak like, reason like, and act like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because he wrote to the, to the Ephesians and said, But speaking the truth in love, we're to grow up in all aspects into him, who is the head, even Christ. Yes. So we're not to stay children, because then you can get deceived. You're easily fooled, right? So what this does, this imitation of Jesus makes you a disciple, uh -huh. okay? Now, a disciple is a student, a learner, yes. somebody learning from another, right? A disciple, a relationship exists between a disciple and a master, okay? A teacher, all right? 
Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. Jesus said, learn from me. He is calling us to be his disciples. Take his yoke and learn. Now, why is that? Because he also said in Matthew 10, verses 24 and 25, a disciple is not above his teacher, nor a slave above his master. It is enough for the disciple that he become like the teacher. Okay? God is love. The goal of our instruction, Paul said, is love. The whole purpose of discipleship is that we become like Jesus, yes. to imitate him. Okay, so we're, mm -hmm. we're off on the right path mm -hmm. here? Okay, good. So now I want to talk about disciples, discipleship, and Christianity. Remember, the title of this program is In Search of Christianity. I'm going to read from the book of Acts, Acts 11, I'm going to read verses 25 and 26. And he, Barnabas, left for Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. And for an entire year, they met with the church and taught considerable numbers. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. So there you have, okay, the disciples being called. Now, it doesn't say they call themselves, but it says that they were called Christians. If you're not a disciple, you're not a Christian. Makes sense. Okay? If you're not a disciple... You're not a Christian. Now, the basis of that is, and this goes back, this was prophesied. In Isaiah 50, God spoke to that prophet Isaiah and said, The Lord has given me the tongue of disciples that I may know how to sustain the weary one with a word. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to listen as a disciple. The teaching comes from hearing God. Mm -hmm. Now, from the beginning, and last week we talked about being prepared for anything, and we talked about that means to be walking in faith, right? Yes. Faith comes by hearing, mm -hmm. and hearing by the Word of God. But God's promise is that He awakens our ear mm. to listen as a disciple. The reason we started this thing is because I will tell you, and I'm going to say this one more time, I don't say this in condemnation, but I do say it for encouragement and correction. Yes. Church buildings around the world are filled every Sunday morning with people who are not Christians, mm. because they're not disciples. Wow. <clears throat> it's the wheat among the tares. And they may look like it. They may go faithfully to that church building every Sunday. They may tie. They may put on Sunday best clothes. They may do all kinds of things. But you have to be a disciple to be a Christian. Mm. If you're, because, you know, if you're, it's, it's really simple. If you're not a disciple, you're not part of the family. What family? The family of God. Isn't that a great old hymn? Mm. I'm so glad to be a part of the family of God. Remember this account? While he was still speaking to the crowds, talking about Jesus, behold, his mother and brothers were standing outside seeking to speak to him. And someone said to him, behold, your mother and your brothers are standing outside seeking to speak to you. But Jesus answered the one who was telling him and said, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand towards his disciples, he said, Behold, my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father who is in heaven, he is my brother and sister and mother. Matthew 12, 46 to 50. Right? Oh God. Whoever does the will of my Father. Because a disciple must understand the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Yes. Okay, how do you get saved? Okay, you confess, you believe in your heart, and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. It starts with that lordship. You know, I, I know I've shared here, I was teaching in London a few years back, um, and, and a, a person who was in charge of this group that I had been teaching to came to me privately one day and said, in all the years you've been teaching and preaching, she said, what, what's the single most important thing that you think you've learned? And that's really a good question. So I stopped and I thought, and I said, the most important thing that I've learned is that Jesus is Lord, and I'm not. That has to be the foundation of your relationship with God, to understand that. If you are to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, and if you're not a disciple of Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, mm. you're nowhere. You're, you're, playing, pl you're playing church, yeah. okay? 
Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Matthew 16, 24. You have to understand that Christianity is a faith of self-denial. Yes. Okay? Because by having a Lord, you are surrendering your will to him. Jesus said it's in Luke 14, 33. He said, so then none of you, none of you can be my disciple who does not give up all his own possessions. And you know what your most possession is? Prized possession is? You. Mm -hmm. Your self-will. I mean, we talked a lot about this in the last couple of uh, programs. You have to surrender that to, to him. It has to be more than a hymn that you sing, I surrender all. In Matthew 21, 6, the disciples, it says, the disciples went and did just as Jesus had instructed them. Okay. Well, that's what lordship is all about. He tells you to do something, you do it, okay? Paul wrote to the Corinthians and said, you're not your own, for you have been purchased, you've been bought with a price. You're not your own. Mm -mm. You know, you're either a slave of sin or a slave of righteousness. A lot of people don't like that today. That's because they've been hearing all of these messages that don't preach, teach discipleship to the Lord. But did not Jesus say, and I'm sure you've heard this, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 15. That's part of being, a, it's, it is critical to being a disciple. Now, when I say you've got to be a disciple of Christ, I'm not talking about a denomination. No. Okay, I'm talking about a relationship. A relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ. Well, there's a verse that says, faith leads to obedience and obedience to the promise. That's, a, that's a meism. That's but, a, that's, but, but that's a sound truth because, you know, it, it talks about in, in that great faith chapter, Hebrews 11, it talks about, just for example, it says that by faith, Abraham obeyed, and that's what led him to receive the promises. Deuteronomy 28 talks about that if you hear his voice and obey him, all of the promises of God will come upon you. They'll overtake you. So, yes, faith leads to obedience, and obedience leads to the promise. That is an absolute truth, okay? And the problem is we don't teach a lot about obedience in a, in a world that is consumed with self. And this is the thing that we're talking about now with discipleship. You're not your own. You've been purchased with a price. Jesus Christ is not just Lord. He is your Lord. That's right. He has the right to tell you what to do. And you have to, you have to do it. Mm -hmm. Now see, there's a, there's a terrible thing happening in the Church of Jesus Christ. I've been talking about this for a long time. And I don't find a very welcome ear generally to this. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is a lot of things. Hallelujah. Yes, he, is. he is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. Yes. He's the King of Kings. He's the King of Glory. He is the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. He's a lot of things, but he is not a mentor. No. Oh, no, he is not. No, no. He's not a mentor. No. Okay? You know what? Mentor, by the way, comes from Greek mythology. Mm -hmm. Mentor a is a person in Greek mythology mm -hmm. that comes from Homer's Odyssey, that great epic work, the Odyssey, right? The Odyssey and the Iliad and the Odyssey, mm -hmm. which is about the, the Trojan Wars, the war with Greece against Troy. Mm -hmm. And the king of Ithaca entrusted his son, as he went off to war, to that, to that war in Troy, he entrusted his son, uh, his name was Telemachus, to his trusted advisor named Mentor. Mentor was a person, okay? Now, th throughout history now, so that mentor has come to mean a trusted advisor, assisting in the growth of another person. Mm -hmm. That sounds reasonable, doesn't it? And the difference between a mentor and a teacher or a disciple. A mentor gives you advice. Advice. He has no authority. A He's master gives you a command. Right. You see, you're, you're free. Let's say you, you, know, you have a financial advisor and you go out and he tells you, I think you should do this. Well, you, you know, then the choice is, in you, 
it, your the choice is yours. Always, always have the you choice. You can you can take that advice or did not take that advice. Mm -hmm. You know that's that's up to you. That that you are free to do that. A disciple is not free to do that. Jesus Christ does not make suggestions. He does not give advice. He gives commands. He is Lord. And you are obligated, obligated, if you love him, to keep those commandments. Otherwise, you're not a disciple. And he is not your Lord. Oh, he will be, because every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Would you say that once you choose to accept Jesus as your Lord, then you have no more choice after that? You are, if we're going to imitate Jesus Christ, let's go back to the Garden of Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. And Jesus Christ said, not my will, but thy will be done. You surrender your will. Yes. Paul talked about, Paul, probably outside of Jesus, the greatest preacher the world has ever seen. He said, if I, if I do this, I have nothing to boast of. I do it under compulsion. Right, right. You know, I, I, I know I've shared this, and I, I just say this because it's the way it is. The day that I encountered, I had a radical encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ that changed my life totally, completely, absolutely forever yes. on that day. And I had a conversation with the living God. And he said to me, you have had your life, now it's mine. We're not in a partnership where he makes a suggestion, I make suggestions, and we kind of debate back and forth which way to go. No, because otherwise I would not be a disciple of Jesus Christ, right. nor would I be what we call a Christian. Mm. I would be a tear among the wheat. This is, this is so terribly, terribly important, particularly yes. in this day and age. This is what we were talking about last week. When I'm saying you've got to be prepared, how prepared for what? Well, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, going on into 4, right? Mm -hmm. When he talks about how men will hold to a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Mm -hmm. In chapter 4, he says, for the time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine. What we're talking about here is sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. But rather, what he says that they're going to do is they will accumulate for themselves Teachers who will teach according to their own desires. Mentors. At best. Okay? And by the way, mm. why, how, how has it risen so much? That all you hear in the church is people talking about mentors. Yes. Okay? We are called, Jesus said, go out into all the world and make disciples. I am, you know what? I want to make disciples. Not disciples of me. No. Disciples of Jesus. It is interesting that if you look up the word disciples in your concordance, you know, you get a list of like 47. That's just an estimate. Go look up the word mentor yeah. in the Bible. It's yeah. not there. No, try Greek mythology, you'll find it a lot. Try, try, yeah. try the typical university library and you'll find it a lot. Try the typical pulpit and you'll find it a lot. I got a question. What's mythology? It's a myth. It's a myth. So you're using worldly myths to guide you instead of the Word of God. That's right. Well, and there you go. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Okay? The, no the other way. But the, the thing is, to disciple, you know, in Matthew 28, all right, this is the last thing Jesus is saying in the Gospel of Matthew. Go into all the world and, and you know, read it for me. You can do it. Matthew 28. The end of Matthew 28. Yeah. Alice is going to read this for you guys. I want you, to, I want you to really pay attention to what this actually says. Okay. Here we go. Matthew 28. End of it. Okay. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of age. That's the great commandment. That's the great commission, it's called. That we're to go into all the world, but teaching people to obey his commandments, to keep his commandments, to, to call him and act as if he is Lord. To proclaim the Lordship of Jesus Christ. God is not looking for pastors to make their own disciples. 
He's not looking for evangelists to make their own disciples. He's looking for people who go into the field, workers who will go into the field, not managers, workers who will go into the field, proclaiming the good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and teaching them to obey his commandments. That he is Lord. He tells you to do something, do it. Don't debate it with him. We're like little children. Yeah, you know, you tell your little child it's time to eat. You tell your child it's time to go to bed. Do I do that well? That's what children do. We're to grow up in all aspects into him. Isn't that what it says? Paul said when I was a child, I acted like a child. We got to get over that childness, that child selfishness, and understand that growing up as a disciple, growing into that fullness of that discipleship, we are always seeking God's command. Mm -hmm. No more milk. It's time well, to you know, eat. But you have to know it. Yes. You know, and so many Christians today, and we've talked about this all too often, because it's all too often true, most Christians actually don't know the Word of God. That's oh, right. yes, they may know a verse here and a verse there, particularly the ones that tickle their ears. Mm -hmm. All right? But we're to know the whole Word. Because if you don't, the Word can be wrongly divided. Yes. And a half a truth can be a whole lie. lie. So, think about this. Now, I've said, you, in order to be a disciple, Jesus said, you have to deny yourself. Right? In order to be a disciple, you have to give up all your own possessions. Yes. Think about what he said in John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. So, Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed him, if, like that word, if you abide in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Okay. If you don't abide in God's Word, that doesn't mean you visit and wait for a pastor to talk to you for 15, 20 minutes once a week. It means that you abide, you live, you dwell, you continue in God's Word. Then you're truly His disciples. And you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. You know, think about the fact that Jesus, it says He did not speak to them, talking about he didn't speak to anybody, right? To the world, without a parable. That's right. But he was explaining everything privately to his own disciples. Mm -hmm. Mark 4, 34. If you are a disciple and you go to the Lord, he will speak privately to you and give you understanding. He said that he and the Father have sent the Holy Spirit to lead you into all truth. He's not a God of, of, you know, who is hiding truth from you. Yeah. It says the Lord roars from Zion. It says the wisdom stands in the street and shouts. All right? The last book of the Bible is the book of Revelation. He is a God of Revelation. He's not trying to keep things from you. But if you're not a disciple, you will not have the understanding. Discipleship has to be under the right teacher. Yes. Every, you know, virtually everybody is a disciple because it means you're being taught by somebody, right? And you're submitting to that teaching or you're, you're listening to that teaching. In our situation, we had better be submitting to the teaching that we get from him. But it's got to be the right, right teacher. The disciples of John the Baptist came to Jesus, remember? Okay, this is in the, in the Gospel of Matthew. I'm reading from 9 and verse 14. The disciples of John the Baptist came to Jesus asking, Why do we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? You see, they had been listening to something other than Jesus. When it came to things like fasting, when it came to the Sabbath, remember Jesus said, you know, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. He came bringing, opening our eyes to truly understand the heart of God and the word of God. The Pharisees spoke, remember in John chapter 9, the man who was born blind, yes. right? And, and Jesus heals him, and the Pharisees actually bring him in to put him on trial, right? And it says that they reviled him. Yes. They reviled him. <laughs> Why? Because he was proclaiming that he had been healed by Jesus, right? And they said to him, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. John 9, 28. This is the Pharisees. And they said of this blind man, who had been a beggar just probably hours before, they said, you're a disciple of Jesus, but we're disciples of Moses. 
Now that may sound silly, but what they're talking about is they are uh, they they are living under the letter of the law. You see, the letter kills, but the spirit brings life. All of God's word is life bringing, but not when you're living under the letter of the law, walking in the flesh. Got that? That's why so many people are so bound up with false teaching. Yes. Because they don't have understanding. Because they're not hearing from Jesus. He said, I'll speak to you privately. You know, the world doesn't understand it. They don't understand it. But I will give that revelation to you. And he also gave a warning to the teachers. Not many, let not many of you become teachers. Let not many of you become teachers. And I said, you know, in this day and age of Facebook and Twitter and all these other things, it seems like everybody believes themselves to be a teacher. It's dangerous. It's well, dangerous. the problem is that that leads to people following them. Yes, yes. And becoming disciples of the wrong teacher. Mm -hmm. There is great caution, okay? Let not many of you become teachers. We are all, all disciples, disciples. all believers, yes. okay? are called to proclaim the excellencies of Jesus Christ, right? That's what Peter wrote, right? We we're to proclaim the excellencies of him who has called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. That is different, yes. proclaiming the good news, than teaching the word of God. If God hasn't called you to teach the word of God, be very prayerful about what you're doing. Because it says, by this you incur a stricter judgment. Yes. So they were under the wrong teaching, they had submitted themselves. They were in a in that discipleship relationship with the wrong teachers, right? That's why Jesus would come along and say, you've heard it said, but I say to you. Right? The yes. Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount. And that's where we're going to go, boys and girls. We're going to go from here to the Sermon on the Mount. Because the Sermon on the Mount is Christianity. I've always said, well, you know, that's radical Christianity. Well, that's true, but it shouldn't have... Christianity, I don't know that it was meant to have adjectives. No, Christianity was You know, it's like, are you a born-again Christian? How can you be a Christian without being born again? That's right. You know, are you a Bible-believing... How can you be a Christian without being a Bible-believing Christian? Amen. Okay? Yes. There are a lot of adjectives that we use that just don't belong there. Every Christian should be a radical Christian. Every disciple should be a radical. Getting back to the root being totally committed, whatever you find to put your hand to, do with all your might, all right? That you hold nothing back. You love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, with all of your everything. Oh. Everything, all, all, all. The Sermon on the Mount is that time Jesus came into the world. And now, this is like the first sermon he teaches, mm -hmm. his disciples. Yes. And this is why it's so important to understand this, because he was teaching his disciples. Oh yeah, there were other people around, but he was teaching his disciples. And that's where we're going to start going in our next program. Oh, but until then, I just want to say, Father, we thank yes, you. We, we thank you, Father, that you have shown yourself mm. in Jesus Christ, your Son, that we might be like Jesus Christ, your Son. We rejoice in your promise that you are conforming us into the image of Jesus Christ, your Son, that we might look like you, Father. We praise you and thank you that you sent your Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth because it is our desire to be in that truth that is your Son, Christ Jesus. Amen and hallelujah. Amen and hallelujah. So, be with us again next week as we start something a little different. God bless you and goodbye, goodbye till then. On a hill far away stood an old For a world of lost sinners